So Power Ranger Beast Morphers Season 2 Episode 5 Cruising for a Bruising was a really good episode and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now this episode was the first debut of the Beast X battle mode that we've seen in the Sentai and all the promo stuff if you're familiar with the Sentai but this was the debut of Beast X battle mode and I think they handled it really well. It wasn't hand fisted down your throat. There was a story to how they got this power up. And it wasn't just handed to them. I know that Nate invented the device. But that was to keep the episode flowing. But the way they got this form. Didn't seem like an ass pull power up. There was actually some motives and, and some story behind how they get this power up. And it furthered the characters throughout the upcoming episodes. You're going to see them develop and stuff. And this episode had a lot of development for Cruz and Devon, and I enjoyed that quite a fair bit. Now let's take it from the top and talk about Power Inch Beast Morphers Season 2, Episode 5, Cruising for a Bruising. So the episode starts off with the Rangers doing target practice at Grid Battle Force HQ, and this scene here where they all grab the blasters and they start training, we saw this in the extended trailer back in the day, or not back in the day, I mean a month ago. I make it seem like forever when I first watched that trailer, but... Uh, so the Rangers are doing target practice and Cruz is the one pushing the button and I really did like the banter that the um, three original Rangers had with each other as they're doing the target practice where Devin says, hey whoever misses the most targets has to buy the other smoothies and this is where everyone just gets into full banter mode where they won't lose to um, each other, like especially of Ravi's response, he's like, oh I forgot my wallet, I left it at home, but I don't think I'll be losing. And then Zoe's response is like, guys, it's not a competition because I'm going to beat you guys anyway. And I just love that banter between the Rangers where it's not forced dialogue. You can see they're great friends and it's just very relatable when friends do that dialogue and banter with one another. It's like a nice little thing they did. So they do the target practice and Cruz... Well, they do the moving target and the wrench is like, oh, I can't hit this. This is too hard. And then Cruz is like, hey, let me try. And Cruz gets it on his first try. And Devin's like, hey, Cruz, you're pretty good with a blaster. Why don't you come join us? And Nate is very hesitant. Well, the other rangers are very hesitant saying, hey, Cruz hasn't had the proper training like us. We don't know if he's well equipped. He needs some combat training first and Devin's like, nah, he's my friend, I'll have his back out there, I'm sure he'll do fine. And it's really cool to see Devin being cocky about how well his friend will do, but it's really nice to see how much confidence Devin has in Cruz, even though Cruz has never been out on the battlefield that much in Power Ranger Beast Morphers. He's been there for support and stuff and other stuff like that, but... Devon has a lot of faith in his friend and that cocky attitude and that overconfidence is gonna be the result of what happens to Cruz in this episode. So we then cut away to the Crystal Dimension where Scruzzle has invented a brand new monster of the day called Digitron, I think. I just watched the episode five minutes ago and I can't remember. Well, it's a monster that scans and absorbs things and that's going to be our main problem for today. And Scruzzle is just gloating that he's in charge of the Crystal Dimension. He's like, hey, Evox is off doing human things and he's left me in charge. Ha <laughs> ha, Blazon Roxy. And it's basically the equivalent, equivalent of your sibling being in charge while your parents aren't home and that's the attitude Scrossel has right now because he's just basically gloating in front of Blaze and Roxy, Robo Blaze and Roxy that he's in charge and they aren't and they aren't having any of that, they're not happy that Scrossel's um should I say up his own arsehole um, that he's in charge? That's the best way I did it. Like Campbell's performance where Scruzzle's just full of himself that he's in charge. Well, technically Scruzzle is in charge because he was the second ruler of the Cyber Dimension back in the day. And if he founded this place, then I guess that would make him second in charge. But if Robo Blaze and Roxy are better ideas, then I guess we'll hear him eventually. But... They haven't done much apart from show up and infect monsters, but apart from, but anyway, anyways, apart from that, uh, Scrolls has got a brand new monster and he sends it to cause mayhem and absorb tech, a MacBook that has been censored because you can't show a MacBook on TV, but anyway, the monster's causing havoc and the rangers show up to stop it. So the rangers go to fight the monster of the day and Cruz is decked out with some brand new tech. Nate has invented him some wheel blasters which look really really cool actually seeing him up close and seeing him move about that wasn't from that really long wide shot in the trailer. Seeing them up close these 
this blaster, this arsenal, looks really freaking cool, and I really do like the design with it. It's basically an exhaust pipe with a wheel in the shape of a gun. That looks really cool, and I do like the design of it. It's very simple, an exhaust pipe with a um, giant wheel on it and a trigger. It just looks really cool either way, and I do, do, do like the design of it. I don't know if they've made a toy of it yet, but no doubt about it, we're probably getting a toy of that eventually. So the Rangers fight the monster, they're outnumbered by Tronics, and Cruz tries to help out, and Cruz does a really good job helping out, I gotta admit. He doesn't get stomped, like, at the start of the fight. He's actually holding his own, he's doing some long-distance shooting, fighting some Tronics and stuff like that, and then he takes on the monster one-on-one, -on -one and the monster's like, hey, I really like your tech, you're coming with me, and basically absorbs crews while the rangers are being over, like, basically over-swarmed by Tronics, are being gang-piled on them, they're unable to do anything, and Devin feels bad, and I really do feel bad for so the Rangers are back at Grid Battle Force trying to think of a plan how to get crews back. And this is where they come up with the plan where they can ish initiate their beast bots into their tech, where the beast bots will get absorbed into their morphers, which will be the whole premise for Beast X Battle Mode. But Devon feels guilt for what happened to Cruz. And this is where we get an awesome character moment for Devon where he actually blames himself for what happened. He blames himself for Cruz getting captured because he was overconfident by sending Cruz into the battlefield without the proper training. And everyone tries making him feel better by saying, hey, it could have happened to Steel if we weren't careful, so don't feel too bad. And Steel makes a joke saying, oh yeah, he'd be pretty unstoppable if he got me. But Devin feels guilty for what happened, and you feel the emotion in Rory's performance as he feels guilty with what happened to Cruz. And... I really bought it, I really bought it, I was like, like, as, like, Devin's feeling, like, self-conscious and guilty for what happened, is self-conscious the right word, well, if he's, as Devin's feeling guilty for what happened to Cruz, his friend, he's feeling remorse, I'm like, holy crap, character development and Beast Morphers again, we're seeing it, and I'm just amazed, really amazed that Devin actually got some development and learned something for his mistakes, by forcing Cruz onto the battlefield, which was pretty, pretty freaking amazing. But with their brand new Beast Morpher tech, where they can fight the monster of the day, it's round two. And this whole fight scene with the Absorbtron monster that can scan stuff and absorb, but I keep forgetting his name, it's like Digitron or something. I know I've forgotten throughout the review and I can look it up in between takes, but basically it's round two. Now this fight here... Um, this scene here where they get the Beast X mode power up, uh, this is basically Sentai footage. This fight scene for the remainder of the episode is basically Sentai footage here and there, and it's basically the Sentai fight scene ripped. There might be some original stuff there that I didn't catch on to, but this whole scene where Devin pulls out crews and they get the Beast X mode power up stuff, the transformation was, um... Uh, American footage, but the whole fight scene from what I can tell because I've seen the um, clip online where they get the Beast X mode power up in the Sentai footage, that's all Sentai footage, so this whole fight scene and stuff like that, unless stuff is original, that's all Sentai footage, unless stuff is different, someone will definitely tell me, but either way it's good Sentai footage, I mean it blends in good, it's not too over the top, I mean, a lot of people are probably going to compare the emotional weight this scene had in the Sentai compared to Beast Morphers, but you do you, I don't really compare the Sentai to Beast Morphers um, in when I do this because I haven't seen much of Go Busters, I've only seen clips and fights online, that's about it, but hey, you do you, like I said earlier, but either way, it's a really cool fight scene, and what I do like about um, Beast X Battle Mode is... Devon's not the only one that got it in this episode. All the Rangers get it. They all get it in this episode. And it's a group team. It's a group team power-up that they get. Because usually when it comes to battle eyes and power-ups, it's usually the Red Rangers that's going to have one. Now, Devon did have one last season with Red X Fury mode. But that was very short-lived. But it's cool to see all the Rangers get this power-up for the episode. Now, it would have been cool to see them have their own American footage power- Not American footage power-up, but 
the um, characters get their own arc where they get the power up, but either way, it's cool to see this scene lifted from the Sentai, and everyone gets a power up, everyone gets a cool fight scene, which Ravi's power up is really cool, where he can basically digitize rocks and the ground, like, there's a scene where he puts his hand on, like, a shed or a, um, yeah, basically a shed, I'll call it, because it's got, like, um, metal, metal walls and stuff like that. And he pulls out a girder and beats the crap out of the monster. He puts his hand on the ground where he pulls out a boulder and just throws it at the monster of the day. Like, their power-ups are really cool. They're basically really cool upgrades of their current powers. And I hope they don't lean on it too much with the Sentai footage from Go Busters. But either way, I do like the designs. The armor looks really cool. And... The Rangers use their brand new power up to defeat the monster and everything's well. Um, Devin apologizes the crews and after that we then cut to the crystal dimension where Evox is back and Evox is like, hey Scrozzle, I heard you messed up and Scrozz was like, how'd you find out? And it then pans to Bla Robo Blaze and Robo Roxy where they're just standing in the corner. Blaze has got his arms folded, he's like nodding his head and they basically ratted out Scrozzle that he messed up so... Evox ain't having any of that. He's like, oh, for my next plan, I require Nate, the Gold Ranger. Um, no idea why, because last time they wanted Nate, that worked out well for him, because we had the amazing appearance of Steel, but I have no idea why Evox wants Nate, and I guess we'll find out in the upcoming episodes, but what can Nate do for Evox apart from build him stuff? I guess we'll find out, I guess we'll find out, but hopefully it doesn't reveal to the heroes right away that Mayor Daniels is Evox, hopefully that we can keep that secret under wraps for a little bit longer, for a little bit longer, um, because I want the emotional weight of, um, Devin discovering, discovering that Mayor Daniels is Evox on him, I don't want, um, another ranger to find out and be like, hey Devin, guess what I found about your dad, he's Evox, like, I want Devin to make the discovery and have the emotional weight of the bad guy being his dad and stuff like that, I don't want him to hear the, um, uh, what's the word? Word from another mouth. That's what the word I'm looking for. Um, I want Devin to discover this revelation for himself, not being told by someone else. But anyway, that's the end of the episode. There is a Bed and Betty gag where they turn the moving target drone into their cleaning bot because they're like, cleaning is hard work. So they turn it into their cleaning thing, which you only see at the start of the episode, at the end of the episode, where they have the robot come in and the robot turns into some Terminator thing where it's got confetti on him and chases down with him with mops and the rangers run in fear which is comedic for the kids I know but they're running for their lives like they're gonna die or something but um it, you did get a cool closing moment with it where um Cruz blasts the um cleaning bot and he's like I'm here to save the day and stuff like that but either way it was a fun episode and I quite enjoyed it Devin had a lot of character development Cruz had a lot of character development especially for a robot I really enjoyed that quite a fair bit and overall it's a nice episode and like with Evox there at the end bring me Nate Silver the Gold Ranger and setting up stuff for future episodes which I do like Beast Morphers is still going strong we haven't had a slow episode or an episode where I'm like Eh, we could have done without this one, but either way, each episode in Power Ranger Beast Morphers, whether you like it or not, or you use the term filler, it's moving the plot along slowly as the Rangers are developing and we're moving forward in the storyline. But anyway guys, that's the end of the video. Tell me what you guys thought of the episode in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, I'd love to hear your opinions. Do you think it was a good episode? Do you think it was a bad episode? What would you like to see them do different about this episode? Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And peace out and take care. Thanks for watching.